What's up guys, I'm Cal Red Zone Rogue and welcome to another Force of Will Random Buys video. So this time, the box is a little bit smaller than the last time. The last time the box was pretty huge and it came with a ton of stuff. This time, while the content or the, the sheer number of stuff in here isn't quite as big, I think the deal is just as good or even better. Without spoiling too much before I open this up, I basically got 19 booster packs for 20 bucks. So the booster packs were like, that, that's 20 bucks shipped. So the booster packs are like a dollar each, and it is one of my favorite sets of all time. The, you know, playmat here gives a little bit away if you're familiar with this particular set. Um, and it's also the first one that I started playing with. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's crack this open and, uh, yeah, let's get to it. Alright, so the box is open. You can see the booster packs inside. You can also see that I got this from eBay. Not all these will be from eBay. Some of them will be from Amazon. Some of them will be from TCG Player. I do find some good deals on both of these. Ebay, I tend to find more deals on, but there, there could also be stuff from um, Craigslist or, you know, a whole gambit of potential things. So let's look inside, and as you can see, they are the Moon Priestess Returns. This was the very first set that I played when Force of Will, when I first started playing Force of Will. This was the brand new set. I bought two booster boxes of this and a uh, two of the Vingolf set that had just come out. And yeah, I, I was like, hooked instantly huge huge fan from that point on and there's a lot of stuff in here that I, I, is super nostalgic for me even though it's you know on, only a couple years old so let's crack into these packs we're gonna go over the cards a little bit slower than the last video but yeah I, I'm really excited like you guys don't even know I haven't opened up a booster pack of this in, in for such a long time yeah let's do it all right so first things first uh, there's only actually 18 packs here. I did pay for 19 of them, so I'm going to have to send that in, you know, as a little comment. I'm not going to immediately just down, downvote them or whatever, or, you know, give them negative feedback. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see what's up. That's not too big of a deal, because, I mean, the price was right. These worked out to be like, I don't know, a, a dollar and ten cents a piece. And even if I'm missing one, they're still still pretty damn cheap. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to see if I can get that missing one. But... Let's uh, start with opening one of these. Uh, if you've never seen a Moon Priestess Returns booster pack, here it is. This is actually the third English set um, in the Grim Cluster. And it's basically the third English set in general because uh, we don't really count the Valhalla sets. Those aren't really played in any officially sanctioned format. So yeah, let's, let's crack this open. I'm going to do this one in real time. I'm going to fast forward through a lot of the other ones. Um, hopefully this won't be... A giant pain in the ass to open. Uh, it wasn't too bad. The, the first two sets were like renowned for being like really difficult to open. But anyway, let's, let's see what we get. So we got the Seed of Light, Art of Simbad, Phantasm of Void, and I will stop and point out cards that I think are really cool. Uh, Survivor of Heaven Castle, Black Goat, Cthulhu. The Cthulhu theme was one of the main reasons why I was like super into this. So we have our first rare. It is Biaki. The Winged Lady, it's a pretty good Cthulhu type card. And um, also note, this was the very last set where all the rares were foil. After this, starting with uh, Millennia of Ages, the rares could be you know, foil, could be non-foil, or could be full art. This one, all of them are foil no matter what. So yeah, pretty good, ooh, nice. Magic Stone of Moonlight, pretty good. I mean, it should be, no, there's not a lot of cards in here that are worth a whole lot of money, but some of these are played, like Moonlight's a pretty good card. And we have the Uncommons in the back, we have, uh, Shihayar, the Distrust King, and Jekyll. So we're just going to keep the rares, like, I don't know, around here. And, uh, yeah, let, let's continue. And we have a super rare, Abel, the Avenger of Gods. Abel was pretty good when he was in, when he was around. Not that great, but uh, he did have Incarnate. And when he uh, entered, when you if you paid the Awakening cost, you could destroy all other Resonators, which is pretty good ability. I mean, I could see this guy seeing some play still in, like, uh, you know, your epic stories or something like that. And then we have just the regular rare, Jin, Spirit of the Lamp. And then we have a Magic Stone of Water. What is this? Sukiyomi, the Moon City, and a Shooting Star. Okay, we have another super rare, Yog sothoth the Dark Myth. It's a decent card for like a Cthulhu type deck back in the day. 1500, 1500 is pretty huge. I mean, you do see Yog sothoth these days now as uh, Umar Atawil or whatever, but yeah, pretty cool. I mean, I like, I like Yog sothoth and then we have a uh, Genesis of Creation, or just Genesis Creation. This card's not too bad. You can put up to one target addition field, and up to one target resonator from your graveyard onto the field. Um, and then you can put up to one Magic Stone from your graveyard into your Magic Stone area. So basically, 
You can get an addition, a resonator, and a stone all back from your graveyard into your field for four will. It's not too bad. It's kind of a cool, like, reanimator type effect. And then we have a magic stone of light. We have this dude, and then this card once again. And we have a rare, the Hound of Tindalus, which is a cthulhu -y type recursion-y type thingy. We have a magic stone of wind. And then we have, what is this, Eden, the Crimson Garden, and this jabroni, Kai, the Frozen Heart, who looks like a Persona character. He totally does. So I know the two big money cards from this set were the... I think you can get a full art booty cat, and I think you can get... Um, I definitely know you can get an alternate colored uh, true stone, the uh, little red, the true stone, or the pure stone, or whatever. Ooh, this card's actually a really good wanderer. Uh, Sign of the future. See, it'll, see it in a, a lot of different decks. Uh, it's a, you know, chant costs one of any and one light as a you know, chant standby. It's a trigger. Uh, when your opponent controls three or more resonators than you, remove two target resonators from the game. So if they control three more than you, you can kill two of their dudes. It's a pretty good card. And we have a Aladdin's Lamp, which is pretty cool. Magic Stone of Light. Two, two brothers fighting. Two brothers. And uh, exceed the ancient magic, which is it's not too bad. It's just a straight up cancel, cancel, cancel target spell. If you control a Feath Sing, the Mages of Holy Wind draw card. And when I bought the booster boxes originally, Feath Sing is what I was after because she was like 15 bucks or something at the time. Yeah, Force of World cards used to actually be worth a decent amount of money. It's uh, come a long way since then, unfortunately, but hopefully they'll be back on the uptick eventually. I don't know, we'll see. But it's still like a lot of cool nostalgia for me. Yin, the Mage of Increscent, and she's. Totally not wearing just like a lingerie or something. Uh, Phantasm Avoid. Fallen Comet, which is like a terrible version of the Rising from the Depths or whatever. Just kind of bounces all rested resonators, I think. Return all rested resonators to their opponent's control, then rest all resonators your opponent's controls. Uh, it's like slightly different, there's a little more utility in it. We have a Magic Stone of Flame. We have this Fox Guy, Mind Reading Fox. That actually kind of looks like my dog. And uh, we have this card again. Open Sesame! Prime Punishment is still, still pretty good. Let's flip through these. Got Oh, whoa! Nice! I wasn't expecting one of these. I actually opened up, when I opened up my two booster boxes, I was really hoping for a cane because I thought cane was like a really, really good aggro ruler back then. And he's still, he's still pretty good. He's not as good. Like It was either cane or Bahamut. And it was like a toss-up whether or not you want to play Kane or Bahamut. Um, ooh, we got a super rare, too. Yeah, so here's his uh, regular set. Or is this just a regular rare? Just a regular rare. Yeah. Apostle of Creation flips into Kane, the Traitor of Gods. And he's actually pretty cool because he continues to, like, call stones for you without, you know, having to rest him. His is continuous. It says, you cannot call magic stones at the beginning of your main phase, but the top card of your magic stone deck into your magic stone area. And but he's only a 700, 700. That's pretty small these days for a J ruler. And then you have like Cognate Resonators you control game plus 200 plus zero. And you can pay one fire and he deals 200 damage to target resonators. So you can like machine gun dudes. Um, I like Kane. Kane's really cool. Yeah. I mean, I already own a copy of him just because I have a bunch of cards from, you know, the olden days. But yeah, Kane is sweet. And then we have this uh, Alice the Guardian of Dimensions. Pretty good card too. She's a 700, 700. Um, she has flying, wanderer human. Now the wanderer tag might be relevant these days with the with the new um, wanderer synergy from Adalbert or whatever. You can pay one target resonator you control can't be targeted by spells or abilities your opponent controls until end of turn. You pay one and rest her to remove this card and target resonator from the game. And it it's cool. It's one of the very first Alice cards. I think it's a pretty good card. We have another Sukiyomi, and we have a hide the chaos. So yeah, there's actually a couple cards in here that I could pull that I would actually use in decks. It's actually it's not, not too bad of a card. He's a 400-400, and when he, you know, comes into play, you draw two cards and discard two cards, I believe. Yeah, draw two cards, discard two cards. It's not a bad card. I, I could definitely see some play eventually. Uh, Black Miasma, Wind Dagger, Acolyte of Darkness. Ooh, this is one of the cards that I could get. One of the best cards in the set. Flame of Outer World. It just says, this card deals 800 damage to target J Resonator. Players cannot chase to this card. This is the very first card with that whole players cannot chase to this card. And it's a, a chant instant. Very, very good card for Wander. You see this in a lot of like control decks. You can't go face with it, so it's not a great like, you know, burn card to the face, but 
Still a very, very powerful card. One of the two burn spells in this deck that are very, very good. The other one is Split Heaven and Earth, and I would be very happy with one of those as well. We have a Magic Zone of Light. We have this, which was one of my favorite arts at the time. Like, look at that. It is gorgeous. Uh, Dubai, the Grand Sire of Musicians, or Jubal. Not Dubai. Du think of it as Dubai. Jubal, the Grand Sire of Musicians. This is gorgeous artwork. And we have another uh, Jekyll. I mean, at a dollar a pack, you really can't go wrong. Here's another one of the fantastic commons in this set. Familiar of Holy Wind. I mean, this is basically your Tama, Familiar of Holy Wind. You know, 200-200 cap. When you enter, draws a card, and you can pay one. Banish it and deal 300 damage to your target resonator. An absolutely fantastic card. I don't have a shitload of these already because of the two booster boxes, but... Um, very, very good card. I mean, I'm gonna put this... I'll put it aside. I'll put it somewhere because it's, it's so good. It sees a lot of play in a lot of places. And then we have for our rare, we have another uh, the Hound of Tindalos, Magic Stone of Flame. Um, we have the First Lie, which is a, a very good card. It was actually used in like a wombo combo kill in Wanderer for a little while, and then, then shit got banned. But yeah, sweet. Oh yeah, playable. Bam, slamming that down in our playables. We have another Fallen Comet, not not super good. Magic Stone of Wind. Save your Splendor. Okay, so this card actually does see a little bit of play. I'm not going to put it here, because I wouldn't call it a staple or anything, but it's more like sideboard tech. Basically, is a chant instant for one white, and it says, Remove Target Darkness Resonator from the game. Really good uh, sideboard tech against Darkness dudes. And then we have a uh, Book of Genesis. Then we have a super rare, the Etna the Snow Queen. This card was worth a little bit of money back in the day, if I remember right. She's a good card. I mean, if you watched my first, you know, random buys video, you saw, like, the fuckload of promos I got of her. So this is the original version. She's a Fairytale Queen. Uh, she has an awakened cost of X. You can rest X target resonators. They cannot recover as long as this card is on the field. So you, you basically just lock down a bunch of their guys with this card. And whenever this card deals damage to your opponent, he or she discards a card. This card's really good. I mean, you can lock down, install, and if you have a bunch of count cancels and counters in your hand, it's, it's really good. And we have a good old Aladdin's Lamp. A Magic Stone of Darkness, a Barrier Field, what is this, Black Moon. Um, then we have another Flame of Outer World. Damn, that, that is amazing. Fantastic card. I mean, once again, it's not worth a ton of money. Ooh. So this this card's okay. It's kind of cool. It's the Yang Mage of Decrescent. We already saw the Increscent. But this card is a, like, format staple. It's one of the best cards in Wonder. Morgiana, the Wise Servant. And why is it so good? She's 300, 300 for one. That's like whatever stats. She's a story human, but she has a continuous. If you draw a card in a phase other than draw phase, you may look at the top three cards in your main deck, put one of them in your hand, and the rest in the bottom of your deck in any order. So, like, if you have, like, if you play them like Booty Cat or something, unless you draw two cards and then put one card from your hand on top of your deck, you play it, and then you get to look at the top three, pick one, put in your hand, look at the top three, pick one, put it in your hand, and then put one on top of your deck. Like, it's, it's so good, just having any extra card draw, like, you know, Familiar of Holy Wind or anything, lets you look at the top three, pick one, and then put the rest on the bottom. Um, yeah. It is, uh, it's a very good card. And one of the, the most most recent promos, which is cool, because this art's okay, but the new promo art's uh, really cool, too. <laughs> nice, we got another ruler. That's crazy, you only used to get two in a box, so out of, like, these 18 packs, the, the two is is pretty sweet. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I already own a copy of every ruler in the set, but still, still pretty sweet. Um, this Kaguya is like focusing on, I think, treasury items, kind of like the new Kaguya does. Just flying imperishable. You gain some bonuses. You can gain control of target resonator for banishing three treasury items. Um, yeah, I don't know. Pretty cool overall. I I'm, I'm happy to have more. And then we have a addition. This is Ragnarok, the Divine Sword of what is this? Savior? It's a huge name. Look at that name. Ragnarok, the Divine Sword of Savior. Yeah, and then we have like this barrier field and another one of these uh, Jubals. What is this? Seth the Arbiter. He's an okay card. Um, not really gonna go over him for the sake of time, but he's all right. We got a Magic Stone of Water. We have another the First Lie, which the artwork is fucking badass. And a Morgiana. Nice. Oh, nice! <laughs> Fucking nice! This is one of the best packs. We have another Flame of Outer World. That is insane. I only got three total in my two booster boxes when I first got these. Or from when I first did this. And then, Little Red the Pure Stone. Probably one of the best cards in the set. Fantastic card. Fant you know, 
we'll see playing a lot of Wanderer decks. I own like four copies of these already. I like having more because I like building a lot of Wanderer decks, so super happy about that. Good old Rock. Ruck. His egg is more important these days. We have I the Pilot. Water Magic Stone, another cancel spell, and then this was a pretty good like destroy spell. Not as good as um, Stoning to Death, but you know, it's a three cost and it says remove target resident from the game, and you can pay two less if you control a zero mages of null. Maybe we'll see Zero. Zero's a pretty cool card. Ooh, this was a good one. Super rare. Blazer, the Eater of Dimensions. This card was like a powerhouse for a long time. It's a 1,000, 1,000. This is back when Blazer was a dragon and not some weird clown dude. It's a Wanderer dragon. Uh, you may play this card from your removed area. He has Swiftness. And Continuous. If a card would be put into a graveyard from anywhere, remove from the game. So basically, you can't kill him. He get When he dies, he gets removed from the game, and then you can play him from your removed area. This card was a very good card finisher back in the day. Oh, nice! This is another really good one. Stories told in a thousand and one nights. Um, yeah, Shahrazad. This being my first set, Shahrazad was my very first ruler, and it was like my first like control deck. And this is one of the best cards for Shahrazad. It is a fantastic card. We have a Magic Stone of Wind. We have this thing and this thing. But yeah, I'm happy to get another one of these. Like, the nostalgia is, like, full-on. These are fantastic cards. This was a super rare, right? Y yeah. Alright, this is the last pack. Is it a god pack? Okay, it is not It's not a god pack. But there is a super rare back there. So, I mean, it's got that going for it. Maybe it's an alternate color, little red. And it's a... Oh, dude, it is a zero. Sweet. I mean, I was like, oh, wonderful we'll see a zero. This card's cool. This is the first appearance of zero. Zero, the mages of Null. She looks really badass. She's a human six ages. She has quick cast, 700, 500, and it says resonators. Your opponent's control gain minus 200, minus 200, and lose flying until end of turn. Yeah, Zero's pretty sweet. Does see some like fringe play and wander these days. I've seen some decks with her, and that is a super rare. And then we have a Apollo Sphere, the Moon Lance. Is this one that lets you play. Yeah, so I was I'm waiting for a combo with this. So what it does, it's in a you know J Resonator Treasury item edition J Resonator treasury item because you can you know add this to your j resonator it says added j resonator gains plus 400 slash zero and you may banish this card rather than pay the cost of a water um, spell chant instant and i'm just waiting for like a super powerful spell chant instant to come along and combo with this um i'm waiting man probably gonna have to wait a long time and then the rest is eh. all right guys so just a quick recap of what i got that was actually pretty cool that was a lot of fun um, like I said, I only spent like a dollar per pack. I spent $21 total. Only got 18 packs, which is kind of a bummer. I will let the seller on eBay know. Uh, but yeah, we got a Kaguya, we got a Kane, we got one of the Little Red, the Pure Stones, a Magic Stone of Moonlight, and we have three Flame of Outer World. Pretty good. Eight stories told in a thousand and one nights. Another pretty good card. And then here are the super rares. I mean, I love Blazer. I think he's a. I still think he's a pretty good card. Five is a little bit to play. To the, you know, a little, little much to play these days, but still pretty cool, man. And, and this is just the nostalgia of cracking these packs was worth it for me. Uh, I definitely didn't make money on this. Probably lost quite a bit of bucks, but it was just a lot of fun just cracking packs. And these are, you know, the playable uncommons and commons that I got. You know, got two Morgianas, got a full play set of Familiar Poly Wind. You know, these used to be like two or three bucks a piece. They're probably only like ten cents now. And then we have a, a couple of the Sign of the Future, so... Alright guys, so I hope you liked the video. I actually looked up on TCG Player right before doing this bit. You know, the cost of the cards and Moon Priestess Returns. Um, yeah, the, the set's not worth a whole lot of money, but, you know, Little Red's worth a couple bucks, like two bucks, and these are worth like two bucks a piece, so that's, it's like eight dollars, and the, the two rulers are worth a couple bucks. It's like twelve bucks, if you ju just to buy these ones. Twelve-ish dollars with shipping. That's not too bad, this, this guy's worth like a dollar or something. So, I think this one's worth like a dollar or two, too. The, the zero. So, Maybe I actually broke even on this. Probably not. Let's not get my hopes up. But if you guys like this type of video, just let me know. Leave a thumbs up or or whatever. I do have another similar video in terms of random buys. I bought a bunch of booster packs, 27 of a different set for like a dollar a piece. Um, so that's probably going to surprise you because uh, it definitely surprised me. When I saw them, I was like, hell yeah, buying all of them. So yeah, and I also have um, one other buy that I did. It involves booster packs, but it's a much bigger thing, so th expect that one in the weeks to come. I hope to see you guys next time. Have a good one all, and I will see you later.